Here we are. Well, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, it used to be always here we are because it was always the doggies. So here I am. So yeah, been, it was rained. Okay, it has rained. Okay, a bit wet. But then again, this is the best place to come when it's raining because of the fact it's a bit sandy, so it drains quicker. So there you go. Ah, uh, yeah. I enjoyed that video last night again. That was a good video. I right, especially talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, the mine was playing up again today. This morning, we say the clock now, so. God woke me up at six again. It's like, for goodness sake, Lord. Six? What is it about at six o'clock? What's the point in waking me up at six o'clock? There's nothing going on at six o'clock. Would you pack it up? <laughs> Come on, Lord. Enough. Enough, 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 enough. Oh, dear. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I did have a thought. Um, I mentioned uh, in the video last night, well, the starting point of that video last night was talking about the fact of, yeah, the physical signs of a relationship will have to wait until the foundation is built. However, yeah, there is a better option. Well, according to her, because she said being filled with the Holy Spirit is better than sex. So, there you go. Just keep on inviting the Holy Spirit to... Uh, you know, work in us and deal with us, then um, she's going to be more than delighted. Don't need sex. There you go. Ah, that takes that pressure off, doesn't it? You know that was a joke in a way. <laughs> well, that's it. That's always a little joke that can be used, though. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> well, actually, that brings me back to a point that God said to me years ago, which really is, I suppose, the driving force of me talking about the fact the foundation has to come first. Um, I was talking about this issue oh, donkeys years ago. It's got to be at least 15 years ago now. And basically talking about the house built upon rock rather than sand, and talking about the fact that your relationship is like a house. If you don't build it on the right sort of foundation, when the winds come, your house is going to be knackered. The problem is an awful lot of people are using basically the decorations as their foundation. They're not using, you know, uh, what do they use now? I've got no idea what they use now. We used to use broken bricks and stuff like that, and um, great with blocks and that sort of thing as a foundation of a building, something solid, really solid. Yeah, pour concrete on top of that and say, go on and get through that. <laughs> yeah, now, you know, say in relationships, people are using sex. That's a foundation to the relationship. It's like, well, the problem is that's decoration. It is, sex is just a decoration of a relationship. You've got all the other stuff that has to come first. Yeah, that trust, openness, respect, honesty. All that sort of stuff, you know. Just loving spending time together without there being any sex involved. You know, these are things that you, you've got to be able to get before you can add that, really. Before that, that side of stuff should be added. You know, and so, yeah, that, that's been something that God put on me a long time ago about that. So, yeah. So I'm thankful to God for that because... Yeah, I mean, the thing of it is, well, when you've got someone that attractive, obviously, you know, you want to be with them in that way as soon as possible because, you know, gorgeous. So, yeah. Uh, but, no, I mean, that's the point. Yeah, you know, she's giving it out, therefore. <laughs> No, in all seriousness, yeah. Get the foundation done. Let's get um, even the foundation of our relationship built. You know, together to get to know each other, all that sort of stuff, you know. But this way, we've got the love that God's put in us. Put it much the way that he sees us. If we've got that, that's great. That's fantastic. 
now we need to develop an actual love for each other in the sense of yeah, from what I see in you rather than what God sees in you you know that's the point of say spending time together um, praise and worship prayer time Bible study develop relationship with God but also go out and do stuff do walks and talks that sort of thing I get to know each other get to know each other in a lot more detail I mean you're not going to get to know each other perfectly it's going to take thinking years to do that and that's going to be a pleasure but yeah that's going to take time I'm not going to wait until that situation because you could have been 20 years for that so no sod that <laughs> not aiming for perfection before you know being joined as in marriage no perfection can wait you know we build that <laughs> that's fine all right And yeah, in the last night's one, yeah, I mean, look, again, in the video, God reveals something. In the video, while I'm doing the blinking video, God reveals something. That thing about no lust, I didn't even thought about it. Didn't even think about it. But God, just boom. While I'm doing the video. You know, brilliant. And the fact that, you know, it seems this depression and lust have gone. Basically, lust is something I've been actively fighting, certainly as a Christian, um, for 27 years. You know, been on a losing battle, basically. Depression, I didn't realise I was fighting, but I have been since childhood. And now I don't need to fight this stuff. I don't need to fight my own mind, that's a problem. <laughs> that's going to be dealt with. Oh, yeah, that's going to be dealt with. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. What a beautiful morning. Look at it. Gorgeous, isn't it? It's done perfect, really, because it's rained at night, which is good, sunny during the day. This is exactly the weather you want. Rain at night, sunshine during the day. Spot on. Yeah? Spotty on, indeed. Good weather. Oh, I'm going to reintroduce something. Um, yeah, I spoke about it years ago. This, I'm not sure if this is a good spot for it. I don't think so. I need to find a better spot. Um, well, I said years ago, God was speaking to me about, you know, as Christians, that we need to have fun. We need to do things and we need to be silly at times. We need to have silly fun. Like childish fun. We need to go and do the things we were doing as kids. Geesey geeseys! Lots of geeseys geeseys. Oh, I love them. Fly safe, geeseys geeseys. Keep away from the planes. You and the planes don't really get along, so stay away from that. So, yeah, God was saying, yeah, play rounders. Go and play hide and seek. But we had a game when I was a kid that was a better version. Of, it was a lot more fun version of hide and seek where you cheat now <laughs> it was fun because you know you cheat and yeah, so cheating is a fun part of it so you play hide and seek but you play the game where you know there's a sort of home base area and if you get back to home base you can then be free but you have to shout out a word when you get back to home base to let everyone know that you're now free again. And of course, people cheat. Say home base is that tree there, right? Which one? That one there? That one there? That one there? There you go, that tree. Sam, would you mind? I'm trying to point out a tree in the video. Would you pack it up? That one there. Right. <laughs> All I could see was the sun. How rude. Right, that tree there. So home base is there. Things like this, someone could be right over there. Shout out the name or the word. Go and run away again after they've been caught. <laughs> the poor person trying to find them. Yeah, it's catching people, bringing them back here. Then you can have an even more special word where someone who hasn't been caught can run back to the base and free everyone who has been caught. <laughs> yeah. We're like rounders, cheat. 
you've got to cheat a bit. You've got to make it fun. Don't, if you make it where you're trying to win, no, no, don't do that. Think of other games you played when you were a kid. You even try and do hopscotch and something like that as an adult. <laughs> See how you go. <laughs> yeah, it's about fun. It's about basically distressing. You've got to be able to do that. You've got to be able to laugh. You've got to be able to play. Very important things. You've got to be able to do that. Yeah, so one idea would be, you know, take over church one evening and play games. But play the sort of games you played as kids. They get loads of A4 paper and everyone makes a paper aeroplane. You play around with stuff like that. It's not serious, it doesn't have to be serious. It just needs to be fun. It just needs to be something you can do to relax. Just do stress. Just do something like that once a week. Yeah? So in the summer, you go out to church, you go and play hide and seek, you go and play rounders, you go and play a muck around game of cricket. Yeah? You, you do whatever. You take one of those great big beach balls and play football with that. <laughs> yeah? Something ridiculous. Something fun. Something where it's not going to be serious. You know, it's like... Yeah, you take a proper football out, then everything changes. Because <laughs> well, as soon as someone tackles me with a sort of um, hard sort of tackle... Next time the, a tackle comes in, I nearly break the person's leg <laughs> because I know how to tackle. I know how to do that. I know how to. <laughs> so it's like, no, we're not going to play seriously. No, we have fun. It's not about trying to you know, make someone not be able to walk for the next couple of days. It's about fun. Let's muck around. Let's get dirty. Yeah, you know, so if you fall over a bit and get a bit mucky, who cares? Stick it in the washing machine. You know, just have fun. Yeah, you know, we are supposed to be children of God. We need to take notice of the word children in that. And sometimes go out, even as adults, and act like children. Yeah. You know? Because there's a purpose that. Look at children. Children have that nature. We're told to come to God like children. What does that mean? Does it mean immature? Does it mean little brats running around screaming? No. Nope. It means that simple, basic love. You know, that forgiving, that, that faith that children have. They just have that simple faith. Not complicated. It's not like adults where you love someone because they do this for you or because they earn your love. Children don't love for that reason. They just love. Yeah, you can have a tough parent, not out of order parent, but a tough parent, who can tell that child off. Next day, the child wakes up, yeah, gives that parent a great big cuddle, a kiss. They're completely forgotten about the previous day. That's what children's love is. It's just innocent. And we need to live that way as adults. We need to come to God with that sort of faith that children have that, yeah, today is just going to be a good day. That's children up to a certain age. I mean, unfortunately, now, with internet bullying and stuff like that, it isn't necessarily the case that children of that sort of age, or teenage age, you know, get up in the morning and think it's going to be a great day. Some do, but some don't. But again, that's something that um, we need to be speaking out about. We need to be making sure that parents are accountable. We need to make sure that kids in schools, if they're using any school equipment or doing this building at a school, they should be expelled. I'm not even talking about a warning. They should be expelled for that sort of behaviour. If you are bullying someone through the internet, if you're you know, emotional and mental bullying, if you're, if you're behaving in a way that you know could push someone to end their own life. And you're okay with that? You need to learn a very harsh lesson. And so expulsion is the only way that 
you can deal with that. That child who's bullying needs to learn that that behavior is absolutely and totally not acceptable. You cannot do that. There's been far too many kids in their own lives because of bullying. Yeah, we, we've... Certainly the, the, there will be Christians who are called to look at the issues of the world and to speak out against that sort of stuff, be guided by God to do so. Yeah, we, we have to show love. But we also have to show that there has to be consequences for certain behaviours because the world has forgotten about that. The world has completely forgotten about consequences and there has to be consequences. They, they see that with regards to laws that are broken but they don't see it earlier. You know, children are constantly breaking the rules of school, they're constantly breaking the rules of their parents but society says, well, you can't punish them for that. But as soon as they get over the age of 18, or even a bit younger now, they can go to prison for a long time for breaking the rules of society. But excuse me, when did they learn that breaking rules is a bad idea? Society, you've done this. You've basically told people that breaking the rules is okay when you're a kid, but then when you get to a certain age, suddenly you go to prison for it. Suddenly, there's not just consequences, but there's extreme consequences to that. You know, do you think that's serving people? Do you think that's protecting that child? Because basically, if you do that, then that 18 year old is probably still a child, very much so. Now that child is in prison. Isn't that worse? For that child, then a parent, you know, occasionally smacking that child because that child gets out of order. What's worse? Now, of course, most kids don't end up in prison. But the problem is, if you continue to have this situation within society, where parents and schools cannot discipline children, you're going to have more undisciplined children. That just goes, just, yeah, that's obvious, isn't it, really? Anyway. Right, I'm going to drop that bit of subject off there. They're very true points. They are very true points, and they're points that are a mess because the church has been silent on so much of this stuff for so many years. Yeah. So all this stuff about don't say anything could offend people. Of course, if you're telling parents that they're being bad parents because they're not really disciplining their children, they're going to get offended. So, <laughs> yeah. Hi. <sighs> That was a good workout yesterday. Whew. Well, because before church, I, I watched a video, Brian Hammerston. I like him. He's good. I like him a lot. He's quite funny. <laughs> yeah. um, we don't like all the other um, trainers on YouTube are very you know, serious. You know, not joking around. Whereas he jokes a bit. He jokes with uh, his viewers. So it takes the mickey out of him a bit. Slags him off a bit sometimes. Which is like, yeah. But in the end, he's doing it because he's trying to lighten the situation a bit. That's cool. Right. Watching one of his videos where he was doing arms. And he was doing a version of um, hammer curls that I've not done before. So, okay. I seen what he's doing. He said uh, four sets of thirty. Excuse me. Excuse me. One hundred and twenty reps. Really? 
Obviously not heavy then. <laughs> Gonna go lighter for that one, haven't I? Okay. Oof, that was hard. <laughs> well, especially when you sew it down. Yeah, if you sew it down a bit and you sort of um, engage the muscle more. As in you tense the muscle while you're working it. Oh. Especially doing 30, you get the second, third, the third set, should we say, the third set, because of course there's four sets. The third set, yeah, you get to about 15, and that muscle is burning. Oh, I've got halfway. <laughs> I've got another 15 to go. Okay. And you just count them out. You basically stop counting at 15 and start at one again. Because that's the only way you can do it. And if you need to count to 10, just do 10 and then start again. Just count to five. That's the way you've got to do it. Yeah, because the muscle can do it. Certainly can do it. But yeah. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. And then I had a at myself last night to a certain degree of only doing um, a certain amount with the upper chest yeah but in the end the reality is six sets yeah I've done ten sets what well, ah that's the point part of the reason why it was tougher the first set I did indoors was lower chest but that was press ups but press ups on my um the pec thing I've got um Quite good. It just means you're doing press-ups, but you've got to balance better. You've got more of an issue with balancing, which is good. Um, so I did my 10 sets with the lower chest with that. And that was hard. Well, because I've only just done a bit of chest the other day. And um, I went for... Did I do 100? I think I did 100 with flat the other day. So it's like, yeah, look chest was still a bit achy but so I did that then doing the flat with cable crossover I'd say that was half of uh, straightforward press forward and half of bringing the weight inside and then pressing out and yeah definitely notice it again engage the muscle engage the muscle to do it and then you're making the muscle work harder if you're just doing it and hoping the muscle gets, you know, is doing the job, it probably won't work because you've got all these other muscles. Certainly shoulders, they're going to want to come in and play. You know, you've got to take them out because you, you engage the chest, then do it, and then, Jesus. Yeah, you notice that. <laughs> yeah. Squirrel. Ah, oh, another red squirrel. There you go. God bless you, little red. Take care. And then, what is it? Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was good. It was good. Got it done. We got those areas done, so that's good. Yeah. So I did 260 reps in the chest. Not bad, really. Not bad at all. It's a long time since I've done anything like that with that many reps. Yeah. Quite a while. Previously, when I was doing it, I was just doing the cable crossover and putting it in the press position. So all you have to do is press the weight up, of course. The dumbbells, you've got to get the weight in the position first. And with press-ups, you're going lower. Quite a bit lower, actually. Because obviously with the dumbbells, you've got the dumbbells in the way. As soon as they hit your chest or your shoulders as you're going back, you can't go back any further, can you? I see if I can find this squirrel that's around here somewhere. Probably gone right deep in there. Yeah, no, I'm walking here. Yeah. Cool, cool. Okay, little squirrel. Take care. Right. Yeah, so I imagine that made it to be a bit more interesting. That there were three different ways of doing it. There's three different parts of the chest. So that probably made it a bit harder, but that's cool. I don't mind, that's cool. Right. 
So I'm going tonight. Um, I'm just trying to see. Well, upper back isn't too bad. That's okay. That's still a bit achy from the other day. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That was a good workout as well when I did that. Oh, yeah, a bit ouchy, but okay. Again, I think I could do that again tonight, but again, I think I'll do it 100 reps again. Yeah. Hi. Lower back. Well, oh, lower back. I did it the other day. It's still a bit. Yeah. But I could do it again. I'm not sure. We just have to see what is available, really. If you've got people using that sort of stuff, I won't be doing it. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. Time will tell, really. Time will tell. Yeah. Yeah. I got started walking at 8 o'clock this morning. Jesus. Lord. Oh. Whatever I say to me, still going to get me up at stupid o'clock. Huh? I can complain about it. It ain't going to make a bit of difference. He's still going to do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, this morning, when I kept on waking up, I thought, well, there must be a reason. What's going on? Why am I up this early? <sighs> no idea. Anyway. Yeah, I've got no idea what else is going to happen today. No idea at all. Just don't know. Yeah, there's some things that would be lovely if they did happen, but uh, I've no idea whether. Yeah, we'll see. Put it this way, yesterday was a fantastic day. Again, wow. I mean, that video earlier on where God was sort of giving me stuff during the video, then, so that was early, then before bed, that video, same thing. Jesus. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Just brilliant. That was really good. So what's going today? I do not know. I mean, to a certain degree, that's the Lord speaking to me while I'm doing the video, which is cool. Um, but I've still got to get to the point where I'm doing a video where I don't speak unless he gives me something. So, yeah. Yeah. Got to get that. Yeah. Oh, one thing I don't know, um, I can share this, I suppose, it's just been put in my mind. Well, so I was just looking at that tree, thinking that poor tree life is over. Well, that one is, you can see the root bit there, and that one there is as well, so. There's other ones where they've obviously just fallen over at some point, the wind. There's another one there. That one's life is over. Um, so it did just crossed my mind about, um, yeah, that life is quite short. But it then crossed my mind of, have I shared that dream I had? Probably not. So I'll share this dream. I had a dream, oh, again, years ago I think it was around about the same time as the other dream and the vision um, in this one I was in a kitchen we was in a kitchen table the old-fashioned plastic kitchen tables with the really uncomfortable <laughs> kitchen chairs looking out the window suddenly everything started going really weird the sky went dark there was you know noises and flashes and the people that I, w I was with started panicking started getting under the table but I knew no need to panic I knew it's the law coming back now <laughs> does that mean I'll be here when he's coming back nope. <laughs> no not necessarily uh, it may mean that <laughs> I don't know because in the dream I was here you know it was him coming back and I was sitting at someone's table. Hopefully when he's coming back, I'm not sitting at that sort of table with that sort of chairs because they were very uncomfortable. Yeah. Doesn't really matter, does it? 
where I'm sitting. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Put it this way, I've done really no videos at all on the last days. Not really. I've mentioned it occasionally. I mentioned that the Bible talks about um, a date, but we don't know what the date is. The reason is, is because that isn't my area. You know, I'm not going to try and speak about something as if I have authority when I don't have authority. In that area, I do not have authority. So I try to leave it alone. You know, same as uh, spiritual warfare. Generally speaking, you know, deliverance and stuff like that. I'm not that knowledgeable on that. So, again, I try and leave that to the people that are. You know, I share what, I've, what I know, but what I know is incredibly limited with regard to that side of things. That's the reason why you know, I wouldn't try evangelism. I just wouldn't try it because it's not me. It's not who I am. I know that. Yeah, when I've talked about yeah, the things that need to be done, it's always talking about Christians. I'm not talking about non-Christians. It's always talking about Christians. So therefore, that's what God has put on me. Yeah. So I'm not going to try and run in an arena that is not supposed to be mine. Of course, I mean, there are very attractive areas of ministry. Evangelism is one of them. You know, the healing ministry is one of them. Now, yes, I have moved in the area before in an incredible way. Um, does it mean I will do it again? If God wants me to. Simple as that, if God wants me to. All those years ago, it was at least 20 years ago now, God wanted me to. God wanted me to help that woman. You know? God wanted to use me as a vessel to help her. If he wants to use me as a vessel to help someone else again, I will do that. No problem at all. But is it something I desire to go into? No, because again, it's not what I'm called to go into. Yeah, it's not my major calling. I will step into that area, same as I will step into the area of evangelism. I will step, step into the area of deliverance on occasion. But that's not, that's not my job. Yeah, it's like, if you're, we've got someone there, so I'll let them go first. If you're an office manager, if you're running a big building, your job is to run the big building. Your job is not as an accountant, your job is not as a secretary, your job is not as a admin. But during your job, you will have to do some admin. You will have to act as that. You will have to act as a secretary sometimes for yourself. You will have to do all these other jobs occasionally you will have to walk in them. But then you go back to your job. It's the same as a Christian. You're predominantly called into one area, but you will, as you go, you'll pop into other areas as need be. You know, God will bring people to you that need various bits of help. You know, and you'll just do what is necessary. What is necessary will take you into these other areas. But yeah, so I'm not going to... I mean, what, one of my areas is about that, actually, about, you know, helping Christians to step into what God has called them to step into. Of course, that's really important. Helping church to, you know, help to build Christians up in their ministry. You know, helping churches to understand how to do that. That's an incredibly important part. 
you know, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, to me, I'm happy to leave all the glory. Yeah, all the glory uh, ministry jobs down to other people. Let them do it. If I can build these people up and then send them out and they can do marvellous works, that's fantastic. I don't care. I'm not looking for the glory in that way. They can have that. I'm not looking for any of that at all. As I said, with regards to loving the poor, you know, not the poor, uh, the lost. Yeah, I'm not going to be directly, well initially, I'm not going to be directly working with people that aren't saved, with people that have no idea about God. Yeah, even though occasionally I will, because life does that. Yeah, you're going to come across someone who doesn't have an understanding, who's going to ask you, and then you tell them. It doesn't make you an evangelist, it just means you're evangelizing on that one occasion. But once they come into the church, well now, you know, my job is to help that person to deal with the issues, you know, give their burdens to the Lord. And you know, learn to function as a Christian in, according to God's kingdom and God's rules and ways, because they've just come out of this kingdom. They, they, they won't have a clue. And so we need to help them to do that. So that we can send them out as evangelists, as healers, as whatever God has called them to be. Yeah. There's a lot of need out there, definitely. There's a lot of people that are going to come, and all those people are called to something. Of course, I'm not going to cancel every single one of those people, because there's millions, couldn't do it. No. There'll be other people doing exactly the same. Yeah, there'll be other people setting up churches, and the churches will basically do all with that. Yeah. In the end, you just do what God has told you to do. Whatever God wants you to do, you do that. It's not about having a plan. It's not about having a pattern that you put this pattern into. You just say, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do here? Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. My job is to obey him. I don't care what the people want. Not really. They don't know better than God does. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. Right, going back to the car now, going to go home. I've already had breakfast, so I don't need to have breakfast. Had that early. Right. Right, so there you go. You take care. God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.